what's in the bag? Find out in today's special review, one of a kind on this channel. And you're watching Florence Ballad A3060 on film. So, first off, I'm back from my uh, four-day holiday in Bognor Regis, as you know from the vlogs I released. Didn't get as much done as I wanted to do, mainly because the weather hindered us. Um, as you exactly know, the Hailing Island one didn't go to plan. <laughs> but yeah, that was that. And so basically now, um, there was meant to be a railway vlog done, but I didn't get to go on the southern coastway, but we are going to plan a day where we can do that when there's some bit of sun. Anyway, something unexpected happened to me while I was on holiday. You know what the review of this product is going to be. So, as you guys know that I have an iPhone, I have a lot of Apple products. I am a Apple geek, as they call me, or Apple nerd. Uh, just regardless of what anyone thinks, I'm loyal to Apple and have been since the age of... 11 years old when I first got using an iMac in high school. I have got this here, it's my trusty MacBook Pro, um, which I do all my video editing on. This is a late 2015 model. I do own a, a mid-2013 model, which my granddad bought me, which I have still got in my cupboard over there, buried under a load of stuff. Uh, it, that's one with an old actual um, <clears throat> spinning hard drive to it. That one uh, needs a new hard drive because the hard drive got corrupted but that one lasted me seven years I did pretty much from October 2010 to March 2017 and in March 2017 is when I got this. This is a solid state drive model and you can see the keyboard's up but the um, LED backlights finally packed in while I was on holiday. That's put up with over four years, so almost four and a half years worth of abuse. Well, when I say abuse, I mean heavy use. It gets pushed to the limit to the point where the hard drive runs out of space. It's 128 gigabyte SSD, solid state drive. Um, it wasn't under warranty because we bought it from Curry's PC World. So now I buy all my stuff from Apple. My iPhone, which is an iPhone 12 mini, that is from Apple directly, and that's on a interest-free on, so you don't pay straight away for it. But uh, today I took this in knowing they were not going to be able to probably repair it. I uh, thought maybe it might be a hard drive issue, a uh, hardware issue, wasn't. So they told me it would have cost me over £440 to get it repaired, including VAT. I wasn't planning on sticking with this one anyway because this is a, I call it the peasant model. So I told them why I was really there. I just wanted to see if they could repair it. Um, this will eventually be repaired. I'll see if I can do it myself. I've repaired Apple stuff before and it's worked. And this will be passed on to my mum because my mum needs a new laptop and be easier for her to get using Apple products because I can help her use them. If she doesn't have any help using PCs or Android phones. She's got an iPhone 8 Plus um, or the 8S. No, 8 Plus she's got. They didn't do 8S, did they? I can't remember. No. So, without further ado, they didn't do an S, sorry, what am I on about? Six, she got 8 plus. Um, I had the iPhone 8 briefly, and I traded it in, got money off my one. So, I thought today I would treat myself, seeing as I treated everyone while we're on holiday. And I've got this, a brand new MacBook Pro. This is the current model, I don't know what spec this one is from. MacBook Pro 13 inch, um, it doesn't tell me what one it is, but I reckon it's one of their most latest ones. Well, model number is A2338, so we could check that one up. But it's the it's a 256 gigabyte SSD, so double the um, double the space of that, and it's got the M1 chip in it, a lot faster. It's in a lovely. Now I've always gone for silver. This is space grey, so I thought I'd go for something different. This one has the touch bar on it, which is what I really wanted. I was disappointed I didn't get when I got this one because I sadly couldn't afford that one at the time but hard saving 
and got this one. So I've always wanted to do a review on an Apple product. I was meant to do one on my iPhone, but when I got it, I was obviously under the influence of my vaccine <laughs> at the time. So I thought we'd do it on my MacBook. Um, literally within a day, I could give you a review of this because it's how much I use them. So we'll do the unboxing. It's still its wrapper. This is MacBook number three that's come to this house in the space of 11 years, but that's perf. I mean, for what I use them for, it's they handle a lot. This one has taken a lot, and including being taken to so many different countries around the world, including Australia and back. The only thing is, if you get one of these new ones, I do recommend you also get one of these if you still use USB-A devices, because these new ones only have USB-C ports to them which is good for me because the cables on my old cable was so bad it started shorting out and I still didn't replace it. I'm glad I didn't because I've got a new one with this. So this is a USB-C to USB-A adapter. If you're not familiar with what USB-C is, if you own an Android phone made within the last, is it last three to four years or something, or a bit more, um, it's the type of charger you use. It looks very similar to the lightning cable on an, on an iPhone. So it's not the micro USB. Uh, with sort of flat shape to it, like a bowl shape. No, this is like all round and it looks very similar. Um, like if you've got a Samsung SA Edge or something, it will take, that's what it will normally take. So with that further, I'm going to put this down, we can get unboxing. I'm just as excited as probably you guys are. I told you I don't just do appliances on there. I thought we'd review something a bit more close to home and something a bit different. Um, to each their own, as I say, if this starts the bloody... Um, PC versus Mac war, don't even bother commenting on here, I'm just going to delete comments because at the end of the day, there's good and bad in everything, okay? I've used an Android and I have also used PCs. To me, I've had nothing but problems with them. But that's probably because I'm used to a more simpler layout, like what Apple is better for someone like me who has autism, I find their layout easier to explain, easier to understand and I find that they prevent me from doing careless things that I've done with PCs. Um, for what bad things Android have, Apple have something good for. For what bad points Apple have, Android will have something good for. That's how I put it. There'll always be something, there, there are certain, like for example with an iPhone, they're not perfect. To me, they're my perfect phone. My biggest thing I don't like with Apple, with iPhones, is that you can't simply select a song for your ringtone. You have to do it on your computer, send it through, like I, well it used to be iTunes, but now you have to send it to the phone. It's a whole malarkey, whereas when I had a, that Samsung in Australia, I could simply select a song out of, out of my library and click that as my ringtone. I could even select probably what part of the song I wanted. Right, so there's the old one down there. <laughs> so, there we go. So pull from the bottom. <laughs> it's like a, a kid on Christmas. I just think, no, these are kind of like the things that I get excited over now. Like a MacBook. So that's your cling film off. Now, I've always known Apple products, they normally lift up. So make sure you have got somewhere safe to do this on. So just lift up and the box should just slowly fall away. Empty. So. Oh, there's actually a nice smell from this. Mmm. Never smelled that before. Same type as you can see, but different colour. Very carefully lift this out by using this little tab here. Wow. It feels even thinner. It is, that's what it... Oh. That smells quite nice. Like fruit. That smells like fruit salad. Why? I don't know. Well, that was coincidental. It's an... It's it smells like when you get fruit salad with apple in it. How coincidental. I'm going to set that on top. I'll set that down here. That's your MacBook Pro. Let's not get confused which one I've got here. So, I mentioned USB-C. This looks more like a phone charger. This is your charger. This is what USB-C looks like if you're not too aware of it. So, very much similar to the... I ignore the state of this, but it's very similar to, see, that needs replacing. I've had that for too long, that one. Here is your instruction booklet, and I think, do we get the complimentary stickers with it? 
There you go, the complimentary apple stickers. I've still I've got tons of those from every apple product I've brought and I never ever use them. Set that aside, we don't need to see my bed socks. Your wall adapter that slides into the top of your MagSafe charger. So, what I've noticed with this, and this is what I, is beneficial because I'm going to show you this. You also don't have the long cable that comes out of it on the other end. This is what happens to Apple cables. I will admit they are not perfect with the nylon covering that they use. So with this one, you've only got this bit here, which just attaches, but you don't have the long part coming out here, which goes to the computer. So that'll be easy for me to pack in my bag when I take it around with me. So that'll just go onto that. And then that is all that is in your box. I keep my box, I would suggest keeping your box for about a month afterwards just in case anything goes on. I'm going to keep my box indefinitely. So this is all wrapped up carefully and I'll show you how to put this together. If we zoom in a little bit. Let's tear it open anyway. It all comes off. There probably was a much more better way to do it. God, I love the feeling of when it's new. So. Will be sticky, sticky when you first get it. This line up the hole on the back with the metal sort of what do you call that knob or something, whatever. Slide it in, and then you hear a foam click. And that's in. That's so nice. You just literally got that, and that plug straight in there. So for every MacBook that Apple have released, you technically can't interchange all the chargers. Although from the mid-2010s to the 2011 ones, I think you could. I wonder what the new ones are. Well, I'm not upgrading any time so I'm not upgrading any time soon. So it comes called like a spring. So if you're anything I never liked with that, because you then have to pull it out of shape. That smells really new. I've never smelt that from an Apple cable before. That's nice. Actually, I'll be honest with you, this feels a lot thicker than, um, that actually feels a lot thicker than normal Apple cable. So maybe they have improved the quality. I'll check back in about a year's time and see what it's like. Simply that, slots into the little slot here. Your MacBook is now ready to be charged. That goes straight into your wall or extension lead if you do. Um, if you're using an extension lead like I do for all my appliances, if I tell you this, use a surge guard one, especially for something like a MacBook or a computer. You ever get a storm or anything happens to your power and that goes straight to your computer, it's gonna kill it. So I only use a surge guard one by my bed. Um, that's why I tend to use it. Right, now we're gonna look at setting your MacBook up. So I've shown previously, your MacBook has a, MacBook Pro has got a protective layer on it. Simply peel off to reveal this pristine bottom to it. You will have your serial number here if you ever need to reference that for any maintenance. And there's one thing I'm proud of that they've got. Oh! Greeted by the Apple sound. Wow. It finally says MacBook Pro here again. So, I'll get it on my carpet. Put a towel here. I'm going to set it up on here, so it's a much better level that you can see. Use English as the main language. Press the return key. It talks to you now. That's something that other MacBooks never did. I'm wondering what's on brighter in this room. I've taken the shade off my lamp. So here we go. We're English. Bigger trackpad than the other ones as well. Your country. Should we say we're in Angola or oh, Bermuda? Should we say we're in Bermuda? Where's the North Pole? Can we say that? There you are. For Noah. Oh, great. What would... Mac OS contains a built in screen reader called VoiceOver. If you know how to use VoiceOver, oh, can you press shut the up, please? Key while you press Touch ID three times <laughs> to the right end of the touch bar. To learn how to use voiceover to set up your Mac, press the escape key. Do I have to listen to her all day? United Kingdom. Accessibility? Nope, I don't need that. Oh, 
our Wi-Fi is hungry like the wolf. How would it not be? I'm going to put you away because I entered the password. Crikey, what is the password? Oh yeah. Peace out, is it? And no, it's not Simon the Bond. It is Simon the Bond's chest or anything. Like some people might think it is. It's waiting. Yes. Uh, migration. Time machine backup or... Oh yeah, so that's what I would do from my other Mac, is migrate it to this. But I've already got my backup on my hard drive, so I'll back it up from that. I know your Apple ID again. I will tip the camera away, because it's private information I don't want people to see. Right, so I think we'll be able to... Yeah, I agree to iCloud. Let's see, have a look. This is where you've got to add your... Uh... Okay, computer account, full name. No, we are not going to have my real name. I'm going to put myself as Simon LeBon. Simon LeBon. Bon, Simon LeBon. Account name. No, I do not want to be that. I want to be called my account name. How about the reflex? Oh, no, actually, let's have a Creda Debonair, Creda Debonair Micron. Let's have a that. Wish me good luck from finding one. So now it sets up your iCloud account. Um, you might need to enter a verification code. Which you will, if you have an iPhone or any other Apple device nearby, could be another MacBook, um, you'll have to enter a, a, a code on there. So what's different with this one? As you can see, look here. You can adjust the volume here. Just by doing that. None of these F1, F2 keys or anything. You can adjust the brightness here. See it? Put the brightness up. Put it down. And this will be Touch ID on this one as well. Might take a while for it to do this. If you if you don't have an iCloud account, it won't. You will not need to carry out this step. But I do, which I'm grateful for having. Yes, find my MacBook. If you have that, please enable it. Not like see anyone to come in here and stealing this, but you never know. The bogeyman might do it. Yes, uh, they say never to do this, but you know what? I always share crash and uh, develop with uh, screen time. Well, I'm the admin of this computer. Yes, enable Ask Siri. Hey Siri. Oh, I've got to say it. Right. Hey Siri. Hey Siri, open the documents folder. Hey Siri, show my downloads. Bit funny. Hey Siri, what's the weather like? Hey Siri, what does the rest of my day look like? Does it need all that? Hey Siri. Who do you think's better, Spandau Ballet or Duran Duran? <laughs> okay, so that'd be good. Bruce Siri, yes. I do all this anyway. Personal preference, guys, you don't have to do this. Um, crypt the disk iCloud account, yes, I do that. Touch ID, here we go. This is what this new MacBook Pro has. My old one doesn't have. So it makes my fingerprint there. Ooh. It's like I'm being scanned for the police. Maybe they want me for a crime, that's why they're doing this. Now it has my fingerprint. Now I can't search up anything. No oh, maybe it's in case I search up anything naughty on there. There you go, now I can use that. Does this do doesn't do face ID, does it? Apple Pay? Oh my goodness me, you can do that on this. So sorry guys, I've not had a MacBook Pro this advanced, okay. So I will set that up. So after you've done all that, you can now choose your look. I always do night mode because it's easier on my eyes, you guys. It's totally up to you what you choose. You can do light, which is the standard Apple appearance, dark or night mode, and then you've got auto. 
which adjusts. I go straight for dark because it's what's easier on my eyes. Don't bring up any more confidential stuff. True tone display. So see without. Yeah, see I don't like that. It's too much on my eyes. I like it being a bit more ambient lighting. Continue. Does take a while to configure it, but we're getting there. Then I'll get to add everything on here, and then I will come back to you once we've set this up. I will then come back to you about 24 hours later. So there you go. Now your MacBook is all yours to use. Change your background, customize your apps. Uh, depending on the size of your computer's hard drive, so this one is the solid state drive, and this one is 256. Strictly speaking, you will have some taken up by the space. Um, so see storage here, for example, I have 218 gigabytes because already 26 gigabytes is pretty much used up by the space, but that's perfect. Um, and you're good to go change your background, that's probably going to be Duran Duran or washing machine or some sort. And I'll have all my stuff on here. If you've got an iCloud backup, now so I start adding new stuff back. Um, I'm just adding it from external hard drive, which is where the additional um, adapter comes in. I don't, I'm not going to show you how to use that because it's simple, you just plug it in and that's it, you go from there. You have two USB-C's this side, one's for your charging. Um, I think you can just plug the charger into any um, and this is your headphone jack here. So it's now on this side as opposed to this side. Um, and I've noticed I don't have an SD card reader on this so I actually have to get an additional reader for it. <laughs> so I'm willing to make these adjustments so just do consider this if you are going for one of these new ones you do lack all the original type usb ports without having to buy an adapter i have no problem buying the adapter because yeah just that so if you look on here we'll look at the keyboard a bit here before we uh, switch over so on your old macbook um you would have had to have had all the f1 keys along here i'll actually show you i'll get the old one out um with the old macbooks before they introduced this touch bar all your controls at the top were dealt with like this. So you see at the top, you've got escape, F1, all the way up to F12, and then your standing off button here. So that's the problem is, as I said, this keyboard comes on like so. The new one, that has been replaced with what's called the touch bar. So I can adjust my so watch for example my, if I tap that, I can adjust my screen brightness from here, click that. Uh, what does that mind you guys, who like, like washing machines, like the hot point spin slider? Or like a DJ? <laughs> I can press exit on that, I can do my sound, change it to mute. So I can control that straight from here, like a DJ. Like a DJ. Um, I can have a look at here, snap to grid, so I can adjust how I want my desktop to be arranged. I haven't got any icons on there yet. I'm going to try to keep that clean. So by press all these different things. Um, when you're on Safari, for example, which is, I'm going to go for Google Chrome. I always use that. Look at this. You can click your weather. Um, and I'll open it up in a new see, look, search. I can click there, enter, and it will take me to the screen where to search for more web page. I can click if I want Google, and that brings it up on the screen. Um, I can do add, say a tab or website. What's this? Bing search. There's an angry looking owl on there. Um, you could do all these things and access Siri here. There he comes up at the top. You probably didn't see that. Command and quit to get rid of it. You go into system preferences and you can change all your settings that you need. So I'm going to change how the sensitivity of the trackpad is um, and how it operates and I'll just further on change everything else. Uh, I don't need to show you guys how to do it because this will be all your personal preferences but just the basics, just go on to system preferences which is the gear cog in the, uh, t uh, what's this called again, the task, in the dock, not the taskbar, we're not Windows here, in the dock and you go from there. We have speakers along the side as well, very good. Um, you know it's a 13 inch screen it definitely feels a lot bigger than the one that I've had previously probably because there's less space around the side 
So they do this in two sizes, 13 inch and six. No, there's 13 and 16 inch is what they do. I don't think they do. They used to do 13, 15, and 17. They did. Um, seven. To, I think anything going above 13 to me is going too big. But you could, as I said, personal preference. The same procedure applies to the 50 uh, to the 16 inch one. Just a bigger screen. But you still have the trackpad. That is so much nicer in this color. I honestly, think it's the better choice. Um, I've sworn by MacBook Pros for, you know, as I said, every computer is going to have its fault no matter what. It's like the washing machines. The most highest brands will have their faults. But if you look after them, you can minimise the faults. Do get Apple Care, which is what I've got. So I thought what would be a good way to do a review to show just how good the newer MacBook Pro is, is to compare it to an older MacBook Pro. Now, some of you may have older, much more older MacBook Pros. Some of you may have more recent ones in comparison to the one on the right. The one on the right is the 2020 one we're looking at. And the one on the left is a mid-2015 model, which has been my faithful one from March 2017 through to this year. So four years, and it does still work. It just has had a... It's been a bit temperamental, the, the LED on the back uh, LED backlight failed and it wasn't under warranty but it, it miraculously works again so while I've still got this going I'm going to talk through some of the differences what we are going to do is do a startup comparison and show you how the di what the difference is between the newer M1 chip and the older um, Apple chip that the 2015 one has I believe it's the i5 or i6 not too brainy with computers, but uh, there might be some more Apple experts on here. But first of all, let's talk about the aesthetics on them. They are both the same size, both 13-inch screens. I've only ever gone for 13-inch ones. In fact, I'll also show you here. If you, want to, if you want to have some real Apple history... Excuse my room. I'll just tie in that for you right. I'm going to show you this here. This might be a bit of history to some people. Look at that. Still has the original moving hard drive for the CD slot and the Kensington lock. This is a mid-2010 model and this is my first ever MacBook Pro. The only reason I still keep it, the hard drive has completely failed on this one. It has had a second replacement one. Um, it was originally a 250 gigabyte one, but it got replaced with a 500 gigabyte when it was repaired. The only reason I hang on to this is it's got sentimental value. My granddad brought this to me uh, the year he was diagnosed with um, terminal lung cancer. I don't wish to really go into detail over anything. So I keep it as a, a memory of him, because it was the last thing he got me before he passed away in 2012. So I plan to get it repaired and eventually just have it as a backup computer. Still kept in its good condition. I mean, there's all chips out of here. But it lasted from October 2010 to March 2017 and was replaced by the 2015 one. It still has pretty much everything on here. But it's very thick. And over time, even the 2017 one has gone thinner. The newer one I've got is even thinner. So it's nice to see how they've developed. The main difference, the main thing I've seen in keeping is the MacBook Pro name here. It disappeared on the 2015 one to underneath the computer. And now it's back here on the 2021. This is before they brought in the retina displays. So there definitely is a difference with the two that I have here on this. Um, just unfortunately will not power on. I no longer have the charger for this one uh, because this took the older MagSafe one, which was like a small, it looked like a pen it did. Um, and then they changed to a different one. Well, that's still got, it's light, but it's heavy. And you can see just how much use that went over. That what came to Australia with me in 2012, came everywhere with me. We look at the new we look at the 2015 one now. This is I have got a very bad condition cable, which I was meant to change. This is what it looks like. So it's this type. No longer compatible with that one. You still have your MagSafe charger here port. It's also a lot more light to carry with one hand. A Thunderbolt cable, you've got two ports there, USB, I think this is USB 2.0, and your headphone jack. And there's your microphone there. The older MacBook Pro I've got, and it had a button here you could press, and it had a light along the side. I, I wish they kept it. And it would tell you the battery status. 
So notice, no MacBook Pro name here. The screen isn't dirty. This is actually what they call retina mold. The actual protective layer on this has come off the screen from how much use I put this thing through. Um, you no longer have the eject button on this. Uh, same trackpad. This side you have an SD card slot. Uh, that's your HDMI and your, I, I believe this is a USB 3.0 port. You no longer have the Kensington lock feature on this, which is what the 2010 one had. And if you look underneath, that's where it says MacBook Pro. Due to the heat and places where I, this came, all these feet came off in Australia when I was using this thing out in about 40 degrees heat. Kind of my fault, really. And then we'd been on holiday. I th we, yeah, no, we haven't been on holiday since then. But 2015, I remember taking that one and it ended up melting in Spain. All the feet came off. So that's that. And now when I show you the newer one that I've got, I'll show you more, more of these differences. This is the 2020 one. A lot more lighter. You do get some fingerprints on there as you've been using it, so I will clean that off. Um, main thing you notice, I've got the touch bar here. Your ports now are USB-C, so is the charger, it's USB-C, it's basically the same things that all Android phones nowadays take. You no longer have the, uh, the audio port here. You also have no, literally just got the audio port here. And I've got two speakers along here, rather than them being built underneath the keyboard, which you only had these speakers on the side when they brought out the 15 inch model, but now you have it on this. And I tell you something, there's a lot more clearer sound on it than there used to be. It's like having a portable stereo. It's that good. Um, and then of course, MacBook Pro is back here. Just got your, all my feet are intact on this. So the only downside with the newer stuff from Apple is that you now have to buy an adapter and I'll show you what I use. Uh, I use an adapter which takes it from USB-C to USB 2 or 3.0. I believe it's USB 3. So I need to use this for plugging external hard drives into that don't take USB-C and also for my SD card reader. I have an external SD card reader which is what I use. Show you what that looks like. Um, it doesn't have to be from Apple. I just chose Apple for this one, but this is an Advent one I brought from Curry's PC World. It's about fifteen pound, I think it was. Well, it's a bit cheaper than that, I think. And it takes all kinds of SD cards, so that's good. So I can, you know, micro US, micro SD. And it runs off a micro, well, whatever that is. Is it micro? Yeah, micro USB. You know what I mean? Small price to pay. But it's um, it, it's all good having all this. It's good though. Really, I think a bit more simplified with the USB-C. Although I know that's why some people are against Apple for that reason. So what we're going to do now is a speed comparison as to how fast the M1 chip is compared to the older one. Um, Washer Crazy is watching this. I know he's done various startup um, comparisons. Also, you notice that my cable, the cable as well, feels a lot thicker on the newer one. So that's a pro because I know Apple cables aren't exactly the best of quality. Um, it's one thing I wish they would improve on. You also have a bigger trackpad compared to the older ones as well. So on this one, it's got Touch ID, so I've labelled it for fingerprint ID. But on both ones. now, what will make the test fair is if we do a startup comparison. We're going to compare how fast the 2020 model starts up in comparison to the 2015 one. I love that starter sound. You can hear how much more clear it is in there. It takes longer for the logo to show up. Both starting up. That one's already ahead, and this one is still waiting. This one I haven't changed my background. I quite like that one. This one will have my personal background. Still waiting. And bearing in mind, this hasn't even got a full hard drive. This has got plenty of room on it. But this is how long it would take every time I'd start it up. So this is good. This one, though, the 2021 automatically starts up when you lift the lid. This you've got to physically press the button. Now we start up. Yeah, I've got a picture of a hot point liberator. And a lot longer, that was. Um, 
Fingerprint ID will not work on this until you, it's just like an iPhone or iPad, you have to start, you have to physically enter your password in first, then when it goes into sleep mode I can wake it. Um, so for example I put my, so this has still got my old password, which you guys probably don't know. Right, I'll log on. I have not entered my password right, have I? Well, that's right, because... So this one will have my background as well, which I've customised it to. None other than Duran Duran's Rio. Um, a lot more clearer, and I don't use my face. I, don't, I do not know why Facebook Messenger starts off on this. I find the tracking is a lot easier on the newer one as well. It goes a lot quicker. Obviously I've got too many apps on this one, and this one I've got quite a fair amount. But what I will show you on this, they both run Final Cut Pro, which is my editing software that I use. And I want to show you how quickly this one will export a video in comparison to this one. The reason that I've been so frequent with my video so far is because this computer has been able to bang out about three or four videos in the space of about two hours. This one, however, for a 40 minute video, it will take up to about two hours for it to export and it will get really hot. Like the fans will come on. It will come on like, you could say, like gen like the General Electric G90s on a Boeing 777. It literally fires up full throttle like it is about to take off. This one, hardly any heat from it at all. And I hardly, I've only ever once heard the fans running and that's probably because I had Final Cut Pro and Google Chrome running at the same time. Google Chrome is no and is my default browser. It is, however, Safari is what these all come programmed with. I find Google much easier to work with. But it is known to make your computer overheat. It definitely made this one heat up to about 40 degrees, and I could tell because I have a special app on here which controls the fan speed. I could always have the fans going, and it would tell me exactly how hot the CPU was getting. This one, however, can run Google Chrome, and I hardly feel anything off it. So, um... Yeah, it does make a difference with the M1 chip. Um, I have had no problems with anything. So the little test we're doing, this is the video of the Hoover A3060 that I did back in the beginning of 2020, the two year anniversary video, which is 7.17 gigabytes. Both computers, exact same video, right? It's gonna be exported in 1080, frame, 1080 pixels, 60 frames per second, as all my videos are done. I'm gonna select a place for it to be exported to, right? Both being exported to my. Okay, so I'm going to click enter, and the time is right now is 2057. You might be able to hear the fans on this one. This one is like turbo speed. Let's see how long they take to do 7.17 gigabytes, and I'll come back to you. If this one hasn't conked out. 16 minutes later, this has finished exporting the video. Whereas the 2015 one has only done 34% with the fans on full power. I'm going to cut that off now because we don't need to have that exporting. But there you go. That just shows how quick the M1 chip is. Because this one has got the... Uh, Well, it's the Intel Core i5 processor this one's got. This has got the i5 processor, and this one's got the um, M1 chip to it. I can do is about as maxi. Okay. So you got... This is this one. It's running OS Big Sur at M.4. Oh, this one needs updating. I'm going to update them, but look at that Apple M1. Yeah, so 2020, and this is... Oh, it's early 2015 one, actually. Well, it is a retina. Yeah, retina display. Yeah. That just tells you how good that is, though. Notice the difference. This one is really hot. This one, not even warm. So it doesn't make... It, it, the only thing with that is that when you're trying to use it on your lap on a summer's day and it's freezing cold, it takes a long time for it to heat up, but it's good. This one is, of course, in the space grey, whereas this is the older silver one. 
I thought I'd go for a change. I quite like the space grey ones. And you can see I've got the touch bar on there as well. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a final wrap up and we'll, um, I'll post a link and we'll bring this video to an end. So, that's the, our comparison done there. You can see what I've done there. That's Floris Van Lee 360 Refuse. There we are. Um, so that will be what we um, sum up here. So I've got to be honest, guys. Um, computers are all about personal preferences. As we all, I always say that to you, right? You know, computers are what you... They're all about what you... I don't know if I that. There we go. They're all about what you want, really. And... It's down to personal preference. For me, Macs are easier to use because I'm not a gamer. And they're easier for me to do documents on and especially my number one task I need them for is video editing. But on the other hand, there may be people viewing this who are into gaming. Gaming, you've got to check a lot more. You've got to check the processor. You've got to check all the graphics and everything like that. Um, you know, really, that's, um, Macs, to be honest, aren't really supposed to be for that kind of stuff. Um, see that one, I have to open it that way. So, that's all I can really suggest, really, guys, is just, you know, go with what you feel is best. Now, if I'm going to recommend the MacBooks to you, I'll tell you, um, there's no getting away from it, whichever way you look at it. Anything from Apple isn't cheap. Wherever we're talking about like, phone accessories to the actual technology itself. But to me, it's worth the money. You can either get these on, now if you can't, um, if you are unable to pay it all out at once, you can get them on a, like a credit plan where you, um, you basically pay it over a certain amount of time. Like my iPhone will cost me 400 and, I think it's 479 or, Five hundred something. I got, I got a certain amount off it. They do a trade in if you have got a MacBook or similar products that you want to trade in, mainly a MacBook, and it's in good condition. You can trade it in and get a certain amount off. Uh, my MacBook here is pretty much not in that condition, but I also wanted to give this one to my mum to take. My iPhone, however, I traded in my iPhone eight, and I got one hundred and forty off the new price. So I'm paying it over twenty four months. Um, with this one, it's a lot harder to do. With the the only thing I found with the paying. With these, um, I have to give a lot more details, but if you've got all that on hand, they will ask you for a lot of details about your bank and your living status. Uh, but it's good to go for it because you pay, I think it's about £50 a month for it then, or so. And you can pay a deposit when you first buy it. I brought mine out right because I didn't want to do any of that, and it's it's worth it. This one starts at 12 99 but I have all... Uh, 1299 but please got is guys if you do get it please get apple care warranty on it you may have to pay a little extra but you know what it covers you if anything happens because if anything happens to your macbook pro whether it's your fault or not and you haven't got warranty on it you'll be paying an excess of probably about 400 pounds to get something repaired this would have cost me 460 odd just to get the screen repaired but i was not going to go forth with that because um, yeah, I just wasn't wasn't in the thing to to have to pay that miraculously it repaired itself and started working again. How funny! So uh, what I'm gonna say, guys, get yourself one. And if you do get it, I highly, strongly actually recommend you buy it outright from Apple. I brought my one on the left from Curry's PC World, and because of that, I wasn't covered the same way by Apple. Whereas now all my products, my iPhone. All my iPhones plus this MacBook Pro have all been brought from at the Apple Store. Um, I bought it from the one in Westfield, uh, London, in White City. And they're very helpful there. They help me so much with these computers. I had the whole team around there helping me. But yeah, they're a brilliant um, service. Uh, but as I said, I understand uh, not Apple's not for everyone. Some people aren't a fan of it. But if you have got Apple devices already, like an iPhone or iPad, it's it makes sense to get another Apple product because they can all be linked through iCloud, AirDrop, all that stuff. I've got all mine hooked up to iCloud and it's it's great because I can access what I have on my Mac, on my phone. I don't have an iPad, I don't think I'll ever really get one, but it's perfect. Um, 
It's also good for those who are students. If you are a student, you will get discount. I'm not entirely sure how much because I was unable to get that, of course. But if you're in college, university or so, you will be able to get discount on these. My cousin did buy the first, or I think it was a second generation MacBook before they became MacBook Pros. And it was in this style, but it was just a MacBook. Um, but you come, it comes with easy setup, as you guys saw. It was perfect. I, I swear by Apple, and I know I'll never change that. No matter how pricey they get, I honestly, they're good things to save up for and get because they last you. As long as you look after them, they'll look after you, as I say with Macs. So I hope that wraps that all up for you guys, and. I look forward to seeing you in another review. Like I said, we are branching out to things like technology now, not just laundry and home products. We are going through to technology. I would have done my iPhone 12 when I got it, but uh, I was under the influence of, of uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine at the time. I had no energy and I was too excited to use my new phone. But I have got it here. It is an iPhone 12 in... I don't know what blue they call that. iPhone 12 mini. What was that? I didn't know. Oh, yes, you can see the, um, wow. Didn't know it had an infrared sensor on it. That's the photo of Simon the Bon there. <laughs> so, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. I look forward to seeing you in not just the next review, but for those who are my subscribers and know what I upload. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. We've got something quite exciting coming up after we do an ironing video as well. But we've got some more exciting experiments with the Mila to be doing. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and don't forget to stay safe and keep it supreme and go with the flow.